Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Clear the Decks. It's a one to four cooperative game that plays 30 to 90 minutes and is for ages 13 and up. But not only the game Clear the Decks, but also the expansion that has just come out, Pirate Hunters, which is a little small box, but with a lot of added extras. For instance, you're going to be getting new weapons for the ship to deal with, as well as, of course, you can get pirates, and not only just pirates, but pirate borders as well, and crew. And of course, you'll get new weaponry, new events, and a bunch of other additional new cards in the game. This game is all about choosing uh, one specific side of the ship, and you're working with up to four other players, with three cannons each to defeat an enemy ship in the middle of the board here. You're going to be setting up the enemy ship, you'll be setting up the deck of cards associated with the ship, and of course the crew and borders as well. And with the new expansion comes plunder cards and these fancy little ransomed cards, where whenever you start to lose ammunition or crew members, you'll have to either put them in the plunder or ransom deck. Your objective? Defeat the enemy ship by defeating the cards on top of the stacks, depending on the number of players, for each of the portions of the ship. And if you can get to the bottom, defeating the hull of each of the three different sections, you'll win the game. However, you'll lose if you run out of cannons and ways to defeat the enemy's ships by taking damage on each of the different sections of your ship with the different types of cannons that you have. Will you defeat the pirate's ship or will you go home empty-handed with a sunken ship? Find out in the game, clear the decks. Now to begin the game for the base game, you're going to be gathering this wonderful little rule book here and associated with it is going to be a setup which is going to show you the number of players the ship that you're going to fight against and um, how many cards are associated with each of the ship components if you're playing with the expansion however it's going to come with four cards that will illustrate how you play the game and the additional rules for setup and i'm going to talk about both so i'll, I'll go ahead and show up show you the setup for the expansion with the expansion you're going to be adding things like additional uh, structures are going to be removed and and new ones will be added. You're going to lose a captain, a gunner, and a crew repairman, uh, and putting in the new ones. And you're also going to randomly remove five tactics, uh, two fortunes, and four events for each round. So the first ones are going to be gone forever, whereas the other ones are just going to be separated randomly from each of the game modes for each round. And of course, you'll always add two swiveled guns. Swivel guns are the new type of weaponry that the enemy ship is going to have, with a unique little twist with an A section, A being any type of cannon um, num letter can defeat it. Then you'll also go ahead and learn about the new longboat rules. You'll be getting longboats in the game that you'll place on certain sections of the ship based on how many players that you have, discarding cards from your hand to place down these little tokens on it to remove crew members that may pop up during the ship. You're also going to be dealing with uh, ransom cards. Certain cards in the game will allow you to find ransom rewards or plunder rewards. And basically when you draw those, you're simply just going to enact whatever they say and discard them. So, how do you set up the game? Well, first, choose a number of players, and each player is going to get a board, and if you have the mats, like I do, the fancy mats, which are actually really nice, you're going to go ahead and give one to each player. Give each player three cannons of the different types, the 18, the 24, and the 36, and then, of course, the associated circle tokens you'll be placing in front of and in, in, in front and on top of each of the different cannons. And so associated with each of the cannons is going to be a spot on the board or two spots on the board to show you that they can basically either take damage or become boarded with these tokens here. When any of your cannons uh, become boarded twice, they're inactive, and if they take three damage, whether it be from border tokens or from wound tokens, they are removed from the game. But if there's just two borders on them, they're inactive, and you can't use them until you can get rid of the borders. There's also ways to repair the ship's uh, cannons as, and as well as getting rid of the borders. In the setup for the game, it'll tell you how many guns, how many structures, how many events are going to go into the deck. I won't get into a specific, specifics as to that because you can just find that out. There's so many different types. I just went ahead and set up a basic three-player game with the expansion. I placed a leak on each of the bottom sections and then, of course, the hole damage on the bottom. And then for each of the stacks, I went ahead and placed cards based on what they told me to do so and flipped over the top card for each section. The rest of the cards that you don't utilize will be placed in a deck to the side of the board, as well as crew members for the pirate ship and, of course, the, or the, the for the bad guy ship, and, of course, potentially crew pirates. And, of course, we have the ones that pop out randomly. These are the uh, borders that will pop up. And you have pirate borders and you have the borders for the base ship. So you might be dealing with pirates or just the borders of the enemy ship. They're basically the same thing, but they have different interactions in the game. Then, after that, 
give each player six cards from the draw deck, which is going to be basically shuffled with these guys with their little uh, spy glasses. You'll take all the cards and just shuffle them up and deal out six cards. This will be your deck in the game that you're utilizing, whereas everything else is for the ship, whether it be something that helps you or ma basically mainly hurts you. And like I said, your objective is to defeat each of these three stacks. And how do you do that? Well, a handy dandy reference is going to be here, which tells you the order of play for each player's turn. And then, of course, attack priority for the bad guys, whether it be borders or whether it be the cannons on the enemy ship. The first thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to look at your hand and choose a first player. And I'll go ahead and go first. <laughs> I'll take the cards here in my hand. And if I have any specific uh, officers or marines, I can go ahead and take one and place it down next to me. It's something that I can utilize in the game. It'll give me a specific ability, which will likely make me remove it. They also can work in tandem with other cards in your hand. Then I can activate any of my cannons. I can choose the 18, 24, and 36. Each of them will require an ammunition card, and each ammunition card will have a specific letter on it. So for instance, I have a bar shot, and it can be used as a grape shot G, a chain shot C, or a round shot R uh, from the different types of cannons, uh, 18 pounder, 24, and a 36. So if I wanted to, I can say, okay, I want to try and defeat this one here. Um, but I need to have an R on 36 if I'm going to use this. And I do have a round shot R on my 36, and R corresponds with 36 R or C on this one. I will then place it there, in instigating that I'm going to do damage to it. If I do damage to one of the cards, they'll get removed, which is important. I can do that additionally with the other cannons. Each cannon can shoot once on your turn, provided it's capable of doing so, but I can also choose to save them. And I also have tactics I can use that all have specific requirements that will benefit me throughout the game. After I have chosen the cannons I wish to shoot with, I'll discard the cards that I have utilized, place the tokens from the cannon to the space in which I'm going to try to hit, and then we're going to uh, remove the targeted ship cards and perform the consequences. Uh, sometimes cards will have explosions on them, instigating that they're going to be doing something when you defeat them. Otherwise, they'll simply go here to a discard pile next to the ship deck, and uh, this will be returned, flipping it over, saying that this guy ha now has to be reloaded on your next turn. So I can go ahead and place that like that, meaning next turn I can't use this, but the turn after I can then flip it over and it'll be active once again. The rest of the cards here are then going to counterattack, and counterattack is pretty simple. There will be a little like cross-buckling swords action, and it'll tell you what they do. This one here says, add the top card of the enemy ship deck underneath the repair crew. So I would take this, place this like this, this because that's what they do, and then I would go ahead and uh, go to the next guy here. This one says, active player loses a random officer. Well, I have an officer here, I would end up losing this guy. After that, then of course, this guy is going to flip over and I am then going to go ahead and draw two cards from the deck here to uh, get my cards back into my hand. You can never have more than eight cards in your hand, so at the end of your turn, if you have more than eight, you gotta discard. What's also nice about this game too is if you lose a ship because these guys will be doing damage to your ship. So for instance, one of them might say do a, a damage to, I don't know, this guy here. And it has specific priorities on the card here. I would go ahead and place one there. And if I get three, I would lose this cannon. So when you lose all your cannons, you're no good anymore. But other players might have them. So on a player's turn, if they want, they can actually pass you a cannon. So you can go ahead and utilize that to keep playing the game because you don't want to be out specifically because on your turn, things are still happening, whether or not you have cannons to utilize. Then you'll pass your turn and play will continue. And that's basically the entire idea of the game, trying to defeat all the top cards here, removing them from play. And as you remove these guys here, new ones will flip over. Things are going to happen that'll have little explosions or little symbols on them that will state when they happen, whether it be when they come into play, there's gonna be events and ship events that happen. And of course, uh, whenever you remove some of these cards, things will happen. And then of course the counter attacks, trying to get to the very end where you can defeat the hole's stern, Defeating this guy will then allow you to remove it. The leak will remain and things will happen. Usually borders are gonna start hitting in the ship and this will flip over. But your main objective, defeat all three of these. However, if you can't because you've lost all your cannons and your entire crew has as well, you're out of the game for crispy, crispy game codes, clear the decks. Pretty straightforward deck builder with a whole lot of variety and changes, um, uh, which I'll also go ahead and get into with my review here. And I'll explain all the different unique additives to the expansion in my review right now.
So just before I get into reviewing the game, I want to actually talk about some of the unique stuff that's been added. First of all, you're going to have the uh, different longboats. For each number of players, you're going to get one of these guys. So in a three-player game, I'll get three of them. You'll have these tokens here, which will allow you to place them down next to a certain portion of the ship, discard certain cards from your hand, and then place these tokens on the uh, card here. And whenever a crew member or a captain shows up on a ship, you can defeat them with these guys here. But when they run out of tokens, they're out of the game. So use them sparingly and choose the specific locations that you need in order to help your crew and captain succeed in the game. There's also plunder cards. Sometimes you'll lose ammunition and when that happens you'll put it in here. Other times there's going to be cards that allow you to draw a card from the deck here and it'll do something nice. Usually it's going to be a plunder action. Reveal the top card below each face up card on the enemy ship then put them back in their original places. A nice benefit in the game. Or potentially ransom. You'll be able to save rescue or rescue certain crew members that you've lost throughout the game. And of course, if you lose a captain or a crew member, it's going to go into here as well. When you flip over one of these, you'll do what it says, just like the plundered set. There's also borders, of course, which are going to pop up when the cards in the ship's deck says so. Well, of course, when you usually defeat them or they counterattack, these guys do nasty things and there's a whole bunch of different symbols on them. The new ones added are going to be the pirate borders, which are even more mean. Replace with, border, replace with borders and place this card next to the enemy ship. Players can't win while this card is visible. Replace the whole card over nearest leak. Wow, it's really, really nasty. Um, and of course, there's also gonna be pirate crew cards as well. So you're gonna have the basic crew members and the pirate crew members that you can uh, have to, you might have to deal with throughout the game. And uh, those are pretty much the main changes. There's also additional cards that come in the, the deck that will associate with these cards here. And of course, cards that will be in the player deck. There's a new type of weapon, which is gonna be this guy here, the swivel gun. But you must have a, a Marine or an officer in hand to attack this card. However, there's a new spot that says A, which is for any weapon to defeat this eight, with an 18 pounder cannon to defeat this card. And its attack is lose a random Marine or tactic or else make a cannon attack on 18 pounder so it starts doing damage to your ships that's pretty much the expansion for the game so it's a bunch of added cards that change the flow of gameplay well not change the flow of gameplay but change how the game plays without changing the flow of gameplay there is a lot of cooperation in this game you need to work together in order to defeat certain pieces of the ship utilizing the cards in your hand this is kind of a and not really a deck builder of sorts, but like you are kind of working with a tableau management, drawing new cards, utilizing what cards you have in your hand based on what your opponent, your other players have in the hand. And you're wanting to work together to utilize the cannons as best as possible, because in the end, if you use too many cards on all your cannons, you're going to be useless on your next turn and you're, the ships are going to do a ton of damage to you. You want to at least flip over one or even two cards on your turn to prevent those attacks to affect you and of course your teammates. There's certain cards that you can actually play to help your teammates. There's repair cards and prevention and of course being able to use these longboats is a nice little additional twist to the game as well. I really really enjoyed the fact that you have these big cannons here uh, that you'll be flipping back and forth kind of giving you direction as to how you're going to be utilizing them and a good way to jog your memory when you have used them so you know when you can use them and of course uh, when you cannot use them and which is a nice reminder for your memory toolbox especially for me. Bad memory. And choosing how and where you defeat things. You're trying to try defeat all of these kind of in tandem going down all at the same time because getting rid of one doesn't really help because eventually there's going to be more cards that pop up. Borders are going to start showing up that are dangerous that can start debilitating your cannons. And of course, you need to explain to your teammates what you have in your hand, when you can utilize them, and come up with a cooperative strategy to use the cards in your hand to the best possible ability of, your, of, your, of what you have. There's a bit of luck in the game. You don't know what you're going to get. You have an idea of what cards are in the enemy deck based on setup, and of course what cards are in your main deck, but what you actually have in your hand and how you utilize them plays a big role in this game. It's challenging, but not impossible. And there's a ton of different difficulty settings. If you wanna play on the easy mode, you can do that. In the rules, there is a ton of different options, not only for the base game, but also for the expansion. They have a different number of players and associated with the players, they're also going to have uh, the different types of ships you can face. You can go fight a little cutter or you can fight something as scary as a frigate. And those cards will have, those ships will have a larger amount of cards in these stacks here that you'll have to deal with. And because of that, it makes it more challenging. And so each and every time you play the game, you can kind of increase the difficulty level. And of course, there's going to be the random chance element added to what cards you get in the deck and what cards are available in the ship as opposed to the ship deck itself. 
Another thing to this game is things are going to happen when the cards flip over. You'll need to remember and keep track of those icons. When the card explodes, it does it does a specific thing. If it has an icon in it, the different counter attacks, and of course the exclamation marks. Some cards in the deck, when you draw them, they're going to trigger instantly, or they'll sit on the field for a round and benefit you in some way. We had a little bit of trouble trying to remember all of that because there's quite a bit uh, to make sure that you do not uh, mess up on. You want to make sure that you have cards that flip over from the deck onto the uh, specific portions of the ship based on what they say, specifically the repair hair crews that happen and the different types of borders that pop up when they do stuff, how they do stuff. It's not really overly complicated, but there's just a bit to remember. The other thing about this game too is there's a lot of setup. You have to make sure you set up all the different portions of the ship in separate order, which is why I didn't explain it in full detail. You can look in the rules. It's not overly complex how you do it, but it's a lengthy uh, incursion if you're doing it by yourself to make sure that you have each portion and how you separate each of the different cards for each of the different battles because you want to make sure you kind of have the ability to capitalize on the easier ships comparatively to the harder ships with more cards. And so you have to kind of make sure that each time you play the game, you'll reset it up. It's not a huge deal, but it is something to be aware of if you don't like games that have a more challenging setup system or a longer setting, a setting up aspect to it. The artwork for the game. Excellent. Really like it. It really feels like a pirate game. It feels like I'm playing, working with other players. They're all on my ship and we all have a certain number of cannons that we're using to work with together to defeat an enemy ship, which can get bigger and bigger as you go along. Cooperative game that works well because you can't have an alpha gamer. Each player has their own set of cards and they're each, they each have their own abilities, but you can still work together, explaining to each other what type of cards you want to utilize. For an additional amount of challenge, you can also not tell people what's in your hand. You can just simply play your turn and pass, which a lot of people who don't like alpha gaming would probably want to do but it will make the game challenging very challenging if you're willing to do so this is a lot of fun a really great little pirate cooperative game i haven't played a game that's similar to it it has a bunch of unique mechanics like defeating the ship working together with the cards in your hand and of course your tableau and how you choose to use your cannons and when they revitalize themselves the different types of damaging tokens that are associated on your board and of course i highly recommend getting the play mats it makes it a lot easier to see it's a very very more it's like higher thematic value in the game and overall a better playing experience. With tons of combinations, there's no way you can go wrong when you try to clear the decks in this game. A wonderful, wonderful little pirate game. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Clear the Decks. If you like this video, check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube, like, subscribe, and of course, hit that bell notification button. It greatly helps us out. There's a link down below to pick up the base game, and of course, for the expansion, the Pirate Hunters, if you're interested, of course. Go ahead and also check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com. Board game reviews, and of course, giveaways, and our podcast coming soon, hopefully, where we start doing some more stuff with Brian, which would be great. He helps us do all the extra stuff as far as our thumbnails and whatnot. Greatly appreciated and appreciate our Patreons. A dollar every month goes a long way and helps us to continue making our reviews and of course our live stream, which is every Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST, where we play games just like this one. And we will play this game uh, either this week or next week. You'll see us playing the Clear the Decks board game on our live stream, which will actually have a live stream video on YouTube if you manage to miss that on Facebook. Anyway, guys, thank you so much. And as always, I look forward to clearing the decks with you next time.